Anyway, we are again in the sixth chapter of John, beginning with the 35th verse. Again, we are going to hear how important it is to remember the Lord as the bread of life. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now, before I begin, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Amy Rudy once pointed out that the two biggest sellers in bookstores are cookbooks and diet books. The cookbooks tell you how to make food irresistibly delicious, and the diet books tell you how to avoid eating it. <laughs> Orson Welles once said, My doctor has advised me to give up those intimate little dinners for four. Unless, of course, there are three other people eating with me. <laughs> it has been documented that the average American eats six times his or her weight in a year. A horse, on the other hand, only eats eight times its weight, which means what? That if you eat like a horse, you're probably not overeating, and you shouldn't be overweight. It's when we eat like two horses that we get into so much trouble. Eating is a fundamental part of life. It's something all people in every age have taken seriously. And it is an experience in which most of us feel qualified to claim expertise. In today's reading from the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Earlier in John's Gospel, Jesus pointed Nicodemus beyond his earthly birth to a spiritual birth, and the Samaritan woman beyond well water to the water of life. In our passage this morning, Jesus points his listeners beyond an evening meal to the true bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. What do we make of the bold claim that Jesus makes? How is he bread for our lives? And how is it that with Jesus we will never hunger or thirst again? After that miraculous healing, a feeding of 5,000 with five loaves and two fish, Jesus makes it known that he will meet the deeper needs of the people, the needs of the heart, and the needs of the soul. Using bread as his metaphor, Jesus says that the physical bread is to the body. He is to the heart and soul. Now, many Americans have more than enough material things to fill their lives. Yet, many of us still have a gnawing emptiness deep within us. It's, it, it's as if God created a hunger 
in humankind, a hunger that cannot be filled by the bread of this world, bread found in the form of power, prestige, indulgences, or people. The hunger that God places in our being establishes a longing for the only one that can and will remove this emptiness. I am the bread of the world. I am the bread of life. I am who you need, Jesus said. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The one who can fulfill this promise is God's Son, Jesus Christ. Some find him. Others continue to quest for him. And yes, there are those who choose not to search. Dr. Malcolm Muckeridge was a world-renowned and highly esteemed British journalist. Although he was famous, wealthy, and influential, something important was missing in his life. Throughout his lifetime, Dr. Muckeridge had repudiated the claims of Christ. He considered himself too smart to fall for the myths of Christianity. One day, however, he realized that he had a hunger that the things of the world could not possibly satisfy. So he humbled himself and surrendered his life to Jesus Christ. He began feeding on the teachings of Christ. And as he feasted upon the life and word of our Lord, wonderful changes occurred. Christ became a dynamic, vital presence. Dr. Mutteridge discovered that the bread of life was able to satisfy the deepest hungers and innermost spiritual longings that he was able to conquer on his own. Now, the good news, friends, is that what Christ did for Malcolm Mutteridge, he yearns to do for each one of us. If we give Jesus the opportunity to feed our souls, he will. Remember what Jesus says. Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Now I'm going to ask you to go back in your memory banks a few years, and I'm going to ask you to think about the library. Not as you find it today with the library of your childhood, where there were lots and lots of books on the shelves. In fact, the walls were, shut, were lined with shelves. Every subject matter is addressed in one fashion or another. But how do we gain knowledge, insight, and enjoyment from these books that we are remembering? Not from gazing at their covers. We need to take a book from the shelf open its binding and feast on the words found within its cover. It is when we internalize the story that we are thrilled, fascinated, and moved by the book. When we take the wonders of the book and feed upon its message, we grow from the experience. Now, here's the rub. It's the same with Jesus. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give from the life of the world is my flesh. To believe in and follow Christ is to allow him to become a vital part of our daily lives. We must open our lives to his presence and his influence. We need to feed upon his word and internalize his message. It is then and only then that Christ can inspire our thinking and even change our behavior. You see, if Jesus Christ remains just a figure in a book, he is an external figure in our lives. We can debate his teachings and discuss his life, but we cannot dine on his being, for it is when Jesus enters our hearts and our souls and we meditate on his truth that we truly eat of the bread of life. 
William Barclay explains it this way. Jesus meant that we must take his life unto the very core of our hearts. And the promise? The promise is that when we eat from the bread of life, we will live forever with him. The things of this world leave us empty, disillusioned, and dissatisfied many times. Each of us hungers for a life that gives more, a life that transcends what we now have. The good news of the gospel is a reality. Through faith in Jesus Christ, the hunger in our lives will be satisfied for all of eternity. Sisters and brothers, Jesus Christ comes to us through his word, his spirit, and his people. As the bread of life, Jesus satisfies our hunger. What physical bread is to the body, Christ is to our hearts and our souls. Only Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, can satisfy our deepest needs. Remember, we can take the wonders of the book, feed upon its message, and grow from the experience. Likewise, when we feed on Jesus Christ, we allow him to become a vital part of our daily lives. God wants to open our lives to Christ's presence and influence. We must read his word and hear his message. We must be so closely connected to Jesus Christ that he inspires our thinking and, yes, even changes our behavior. Jesus is the life-giving word from heaven. You can't hear it enough. I am the bread of life, Jesus says. The fundamental human appetite, the hunger beneath all hungers, yearns for the word of God. Jesus not only speaks the word that proceeds from the mouth of God, Jesus Christ is the word. The bread which is more than bread, the manna that the people do not know. Remember, when we are nourished and strengthened by Jesus Christ, we are dining on a great meal. Friends, when we join with Christ, our deepest hungers of our hearts and our souls will be satisfied. When we take the time to embrace Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus will embrace us. Be ready, people, because God never goes back on God's promise. I am the bread of life, says the Christ to us. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity again to remember who you are and to whom we belong. Show us ways to dine on you, Lord God, so that our souls and our hearts may be nourished in a very special way. We thank you for the promises that you make to us. For it is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.